I think you heard us then because we had the mic, the mic up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I just realised. I thought you know, hearing an uh, Englishman and a Canadian laugh. Uh, many thanks this time Musical Radio will start uh, on yep yeah, Musical Radio tonight uh, Monday 8 till 10 and this is me DJ Reeving with the Folk to Funk show tonight's a special we've got uh, blah, 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 uh, Gavin Stevenson and uh, you have got Kev, uh, Gavin Stevenson uh, the guitarist and Tom Durans on the drums um, got aggravation from uh, Bradford the next hour is going to be more conversation and uh, playing an EP then the last half hour 20 minutes ish we're going to have a live performance performance. Gavin's going to be on the guitar, acoustic, and Tom's going to be on the snare. This is going to, this is falls apart, and there's actually a video to this. We'll talk about more about that after the first minute of this. Aggravation falls apart. Clean, apparently. On Music World Radio. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, mate. Hello. Not too bad. Hello, Gavin and Tom on Music Wall Radio. Well, welcome to Music Wall Radio for a start. And uh, of course, uh, a lot, a few, quite a few people listen. I noticed. So uh, you got a crowd in. And um, but uh, yeah, obviously this new this tracks f- uh, fall apart uh, by your yourself, the trio. Uh, where's the other Where's the other guy tonight? He's in Manchester. Really? <laughs> yeah. He's at uni, Salford. Oh, okay. Do you actually all live in Bradford, or...? Um, for, yeah, we do. Well, normally, he's, he's in Manchester, but we're all from Bradford. Me and Tom are in Bradford. Ah, oh, okay. Adult. And uh, with this video specifically, because obviously it's promoting your EP, um, what's this like, it says University module on the description on YouTube with the video. Is it like, uh, is that how you got the video made for like a, u- a university project or something? Yeah, it wasn't our university project. It's one of us friends that's promoted us and done stuff before yeah uh, he's sat in the room with us now actually as well. <laughs> hello <laughs> that's james oh okay yeah hello that's james I, I saw your credit on the on youtube so congratulations on being credited <laughs> but uh, yeah so uh in terms of this on pacifically um uh is it like uh well, i know it's part of your ep you recorded this last year this video for this song and that uh, how old is actually the EP? Because uh, did you actually record the video before you released the EP, or what happened? Uh, do you mean the Descent EP? Sorry. Got- oh. uh, the the song's quite old, but we, it's had a couple of re-recordings since oh, okay. we've changed the lineup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I see you change the drummer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, about eight times. Eight times, God. So. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 is, what is it with drummers? Oh, one <laughs> drummers are assholes. <laughs> well, I've heard that with other they, they, musicians, so, you know, I'll, uh, I, I wouldn't say, oh, yeah, get, uh, it's not just the drummers, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how did the uh, yeah. video come about originally? Was it your, actually your idea to do it as, like, a promotional thing, or was it, like, because it was an uh, opportunity at the time? Or? Well, we wa- we've always wanted to do one, but when... James needed to do do it for his uni course. It was like two birds with one stone. Yeah. So shameless promotion as well as getting your uni work done. So uh, how old is the actual EP as a whole? Have you been writing it for some time, or uh, what? What What's the situation with it? So, because uh, uh, the uh, as you said, the, it's been written for a while now. The EP is it like? Uh, is it like? A lot, well, uh, the. The uh, the video was done last year, so because you said it's like uh, how how old the EP? How how long has it been around? The the EP that is originally off called Descent's been around since two thousand and eight. Oh okay. But we're still in the process of recording a new EP. Yeah. 
uh, that's going to have about six songs, and we've re-record the recording that you've got there is the re-recording. Oh, the, okay. Because uh, I'm song's been around nearly four years. Yeah, because I, I saw I saw the other albums on the Reverb Nation. And I sort of oh we got a few out. You know you've been around for about two, it's about two thousand three, like it says on there. And yeah. So because we're I, not counting uh, the first two albums. Because I I I because I, I, I take it for the songs that you sent aren't all off one EP then. No, ah, so, so, okay. some of them are, are are all off the EP that we said was released a few years ago and. Some of them are just new recordings that will be on the new EP we're now recording. Oh, I see. Because uh, for some reason I thought it was an EP. <laughs> I thought you were like promoting a new EP. Oh, okay. I got that. That's cleared that up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we are we are promoting it, but not officially out yet. But we've got a, more uh, half of the tracks we've you've got anyway. So yeah. So you're not wrong, but we're <laughs> <clear enough. laughs> so like because uh, what you just said about you know uh, is that the plan actually to re-record uh, some old material for uh, uh, something you you're actually going to release? Yeah, well, yeah. well, well, well just oh, our house phone's ringing. <laughs> oh, I had that the other day with a photo video. Don't worry about it. Oh no, it's gone. No, yeah, we're only it, it's only old ones, the ones we really like that we just want some solid drumming on. Yeah. And um, of course, like you, uh, basically going back to the beginning with the band. Uh, obviously, you've been around for, for a couple of years now, which I, I was like, we just, play, we just played their track Fallout. Yeah, because uh, obviously you guys have been around like uh, for a couple of years now. It's now 2012, so it's 2003 where you started. How did the band come together in the first place? Bloody hell, is that nearly 10 years? How did the band come together? Um, me and the bass player is not here at the moment um went to school together um when we were teenagers and just thought it was cool to start a band really we used to play in the school bands at school uh, um and then we just took it from there when so we started the getting into rock sorry where else are you still there yeah yeah sorry keep going <laughs> i haven't gone i haven't gone <laughs> uh, well all three the, the original three we all went to the same school yeah and started it when we were kids, released a couple of terrible CDs. That's why when you asked for the music from the early CDs earlier, we didn't give you them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, surely they can't be that bad. It's the, yeah, but the CD, you know, like, I the like balls it. hadn't dropped by the time I was singing on it. He <laughs> <laughs> bored back then too. Oh. Oh, yeah. So, uh... Tom likes it, but he didn't have to suffer the playing <laughs> on the actual album. God. <laughs> So in terms of writing and things, who actually is the main songwriter? Do you actually do it all together as a, as a trio of a band? Do you all write parts or how does it work with, with, with all three of you with writing? We are, well, it's a collaboration really. Yeah. Somebody will have a main idea. Tom's not involved because he's just a dog, but no, he's not really. <laughs> um, it it it'd usually stem out of a guitar riff or a, a vocal melody or something, but we are individual parts. Because uh, when uh, you start recording the albums, obviously you were recording a few things for a new EP, as you said, and Fallout's one, uh, Fall Apart, uh, Fall Apart's one of them. Uh, yeah. How do you record them? Do you actually, you know, like a lot of people, do you like start simple, like you, you have an idea, you write something, uh, you put it down like a demo, then do you actually go into like uh, like a professional recording studio or you've got your own gear? Well, we've got our own gear, so yeah. I'd say it was... Thoroughly unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got like a, like a, a, a mix and deck, or if you just uh, if you just got yeah, like... we've got a, a couple of little uh, mixes and we record onto Cubase. Yeah. At the moment. Purely because you can't work Pro Tools. <laughs> well, not everybody can. <laughs> you know, I couldn't. But uh, what I'm going to do, guys, is uh, play another track. Uh, uh, we're going to play Missing You. Which, which actually, uh, where does Missing You come from in the whole maze of albums? Uh, the Descent EP from 2008. Okay, that's so I know because I haven't got a clue. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, how did this come about? This specific uh, song was it like? Uh, did it, was it recorded with a few together, or did it come as its own in the flash spur of the moment idea you wrote? It was, uh, believe it or not, written very drunk in my back garden <laughs> as an acoustic yeah. song. And then 
a few months later we recorded it with somebody I went to Leeds College of Music with in York and then it became what it is on that CD. Well there you go, this is, uh, I'll take it, this is a re-recording of it or is this the, I'll take it, this is a re-recording. No, this is the only recording of it, so this oh, is okay. not top. I thought I was going to say, I thought, oh, you actually get, you accidentally gave me an album version. Ah! <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> So this is Aggravation, uh, the only one version, so, you know, prepare yourself. This is uh, Missing You on Music World Radio. <laughs> Bit of aggravation, and uh, yes, uh, everybody in music radio, you can't. Uh, I can't click off the Skype. <laughs> I actually don't know why, but there you go. But uh, you can hear a few rumblings in the background, but it's not severe. <laughs> Just regarding that song, Tom yep. was bitching about everything that was wrong with it. So. Cool, go for it. No, I didn't on that song, so <laughs> <laughs> just to make things clear. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, one thing I actually noticed uh, about the bass player, obviously he's not there, but I like the fact he's got, what was it, a seven-string bass? Sorry, six. Six-string. Oh, six-string bass is it, because like, I, I, uh, I thought I'd quite call cool that. Does, uh, is that uh, 
was was that uh, when you st- first started the band? Did he? Uh, uh, did you notice that? Did it? Uh, did you think it like would uh, uh, like have an effect on the music as such? Be a bit more unique, or did it? Did he just bring it along for the door? <laughs> uh, when we first started, I wanted him to get a five string low B. Yeah, and it was no our basses are only meant to have four strings, and then. A few years later, it turns out we were a six-string bass with a higher <laughs> note as well. So it just took a lot of talking him into it. <laughs> and uh, in, in terms of what you've got, in terms of like, uh, like you two got uh, drums and stuff and the guitar, um, you know, uh, is there a reason you like, uh, well, like are you, Gavin, is there a reason like you uh, play that guitar you've got or have you changed over time? I know a lot of people do change their instruments, guitars. To, do you like the feel of it when you play it or uh, is it one of those things where you lo- it's, it's good to sing with, you know, because obviously not everybody can sing and play guitar? Yeah, well, I think as you, uh, as you get older, I've got a bit more money <laughs> to buy a decent guitar. They used to play cheap Fenders, and now I play Paul Reed Smith. Yeah. Uh, and it's nice and light, so you can move about a bit while you're singing. Not like <coughs> Gibsons, which tend to weigh you down, which I once borrowed one for a gig when I broke <laughs> it. was a painful gig. And uh, what, what about you, uh, Tom? Uh, uh, same question regards your drum, uh, drum kit. Um, yeah, um, I use Tama Superstar drums. Uh, yeah. I just I love the sound. I once I, I had a pearl kit. Yeah. But a lot of the drummers I was listening to all had tamas, so and I was thinking that's the sound I wanted, so I got a tamar kit. Yeah, because one, one thing I noticed because uh, the band Diamond, I sometimes like I would go on the drums because we've got a drummer in the band, and like he got one off eBay, and you can always tell between a three hundred pound kit and a like a kit for about near enough a gram. It's like a guitar. I don't I bet I don't know. I'll make a difference. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I once had a really cheap PV kit, which oh, was yeah. terrible. It was, was, it, was it one of those kits where if you hit the Sims a few times, they put dents in them? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And yeah. um, I actually yeah. learned drums on that PV kit, and um, people didn't like it. So, <laughs> I got a note through the, well, yeah, I got a note saying somebody didn't like it once, which was funny. You got a note? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> through your through letter box, letterbox, yeah. Did somebody pass you it? From a name of saying... Stop drumming. <laughs> <laughs> you have a song in front of your a main drummer. Stop drumming. And you can see, you know, get another video done. Just uh, one of those warning signs. Stop drumming on it. <laughs> but um, and, uh, obviously you've uh, got, I'll say got a video still apart and uh, it's still outside. In terms of uh, outside stuff when you're playing in gigs and things, uh, you, you seem to be, you've done quite a bit. Uh, and you got a lot booked for this year as well. Do you, uh, is it all around the Bradford area? Yeah, quite a lot of it is. Yeah. We've built up a few regular gigging venues that keep asking us back, so we're too polite to turn them down. <laughs> <laughs> and, but um, it, like sometimes, like Leeds and Jason's tried to get us some in Manchester and Liverpool, so <clears throat> try and push it a bit further. And uh, when you, because uh, obviously you've, uh, you've been playing live for some time, because you have, you know, you've been going for a couple of years now, and. Uh, do you uh, have you actually played the previous stuff out, or you know when you were, obviously you've been going for about five years? Have you uh, actually gigged a lot over the time, or has it really only been like recently you've gigged with uh, with, uh, with 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 music? No, no, we've we've been gigging since day one. Really, okay. in fact, we we did gigs before we recorded anything. We just that's what we <coughs> recording really was second to actually playing live. Yeah. And uh, when when you started gigging, because like, uh, was it um, like in the fact that uh, or, or did, was you in other b- uh, bands before you came together and stuff? So like, uh, was it like the fact like uh, you were in like uh, cover bands or something? And then uh, did you like mix it uh, like when you started, but then you progressed more to your own writing, or how how did it go when you first started? It was learn as much as you can to get a set together, whoever that was covers our original material. To start with, we probably just did like two albums worth of Nickelback songs <laughs> and a couple of originals, <laughs> and, which um, we liked, but I don't think many of the audience members were that impressed, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, of course, like I said, uh, you re-recording uh, the material you've got. Uh, was uh, uh, was how, how what what uh, what was the idea behind re-recording it? Uh, obviously, you got you sort of, like you say you got a couple of albums. And the information is on Reverb Nation, but uh, what why why did you decide to just re-record a few things and release them? Why not say like do a whole album again, or uh, what what's the goal with it? Well, because some of some of the old material is just crap, <laughs> so we don't want to re-record it. But some of the stuff we really like, we just want to have a re- true reflection of what we sound like now with the how my voice sounds now. And obviously, we've got a new lineup. Yeah, not new anymore. It's two years old. But <laughs> well, what we can do, guys, is uh, well, we have a chat. I guess if you want to uh, over over this track, is uh, get your goat and. Uh, is there a reason why it's called Caught. Get Your Coat? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm got my eyes are bloody going. Get your go oh, I get your coat. <laughs> that would be more interesting. Get your coat, coat, yeah. I was supposed to say get your goat third, I thought is it the third goat you've used or something? <laughs> no, that's that's the third mix. <laughs> oh, what, yeah, yeah, I I I, I gathered that. I thought, I thought I thought I thought I'd ask. <laughs> this is aggravation, uh, inclu- uh uh, written and performed by the two guys on Skype. Get your coat. The third. Goat. <laughs> <laughs> or in brackets, goat, whichever one you prefer. <laughs> on Music World Radio. <laughs> Get your uh, coat before I get the goat in. <laughs> I'm using all radio by aggravation, and I've got Gavin uh, Stevenson, the guitarist and singer of that. The very nice guitar work on actually, and I like. I hope you're gonna make not making excuses. Oh, I did that by the computer fast. <laughs> Something like that. No, I don't even know how to get a computer to do that. If I did, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It might it's sound better. It's Probably. funny if you do something <laughs> on the computer, <laughs> take twice as bleeding long, doesn't it? <laughs> and and uh, Tom on the drums. 
uh, with this snare. And they're going to perform uh, in about half well, about, about half hour. And um, got one track left for theirs and two uh, influence, which I might actually, which I might actually, sorry, somebody interrupted me, <laughs> with uh, well, I might throw them in. But um, uh, I, I actually see guys, you got a, a lot of gigs coming up, and uh, I'd, I was looking around on your Facebook and. Um, well, what is the privateer? Is it like a bar or a pub? I'm sort of quite intrigued, even uh, even by the title. The privateer sounds quite, sounds like a pirate ship. <laughs> uh, it, it's a, it's, pirates, a, it's, a it? it's a pub. Yeah, you get a lot of pirates in it. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in terms of like gigs and stuff, uh, I say you got a lot, a lot booked from March until what well, it says December on on the events and stuff on Facebook and what I've been looking at, and. Um, how long have you, uh, uh, you said you've been doing uh, uh, gigging since you started? Uh, how far have you gigged? If it, is it just like the local area, or has it been uh, f- as far the, as far out as you can? Right, get Le- Leeds, uh, Huddersfield, well, not West Yorkshire, really. Yeah. So not just Bradford, but not as far out as you can go. <laughs> Where it, not all the lovely Yorkshire towns. <laughs> ah, very nice indeed. And uh, I said, uh, in terms of music and stuff, um, it, it, but I said, you, like you said, you've basically taken uh, music, uh, what uh, you like and uh, what you don't like, from uh, separate albums and stuff. And uh, and obviously, with a lot of bands, uh, you know, you got the net and things, and MySpace and my mo- mobile keeps going off. Um, uh, what's uh, your particular? Well, you said like you know you've uh, basically taken tracks from certain albums you've got and put them into an EP. Um, uh, you actually doing anything different with the new songs in terms of like how you uh, is, is it just going to be the three of you set with the band or have you got plans to like have another band member or so? Uh, have you thought about that kind of thing or is it just you three as a band? It's just us three as far as yeah. <clears throat> musicians go. You've never really thought about getting another member. No. It's but it made things interesting though, I guess. Like, like another guitar sounds cool, I think. But also I'm not gonna I'm not gonna write <laughs> like high. I reckon if we got three drummers then we might be on Disney. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, um we've with the old because we've written a fair amount of new material together yeah. as well that, that's completely new, not on any of the albums. Yeah. So the the old stuff we're just wanting, to not make it sound exactly the same, but I just want fine tune it, want Tom on it, <laughs> even though he's a bit of a dick. <laughs> and uh, so uh, actually, with uh, because I got two songs left, uh, I'll, ma- I'll actually go through them the next half hour. Um, got Blackstone, Cherry, and Foo Fires, and of course I played uh, 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 a few before we come on the first half hour and. Uh, uh, are they the favourites of all the bands like Nickelback and the Foo Fighters and stuff and the Beatles are they like everybody's favourite oh, tracks only I like the Beatles out of the three of us really? Oh. <laughs> yeah well I like the harmonies and melodies and everything yeah, that's, but that's good it's not heavy enough for the other two. Oh, okay oh I see it's got to be heavy is it anyway. well not heavy but Nickelback's <laughs> not <laughs> to be fair I like some heavy bands but that's just me I'm so, the heavy guy in the band is it, is it, uh, so who, who likes what in the band? Is it like uh, some uh, like the drummer likes the heavy stuff at the time, the bass player likes uh, the Foo Fighters, or like uh, 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 well, all, all, obviously all the influences for these songs are in the band. You can hear them sort of thing because it's uh, heavy. Well, um, Nickelback is the one we'll all agree on. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, what else is it? <clears throat> Guns N' Roses. Yeah. Two oh, yeah, out of three. Yeah. The Police. The Police. Yeah. We all like Foo Fighters. Like, actually, I don't know about that. You, you said they were boring. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> if Bennett had been here, have you heard of Dream Theatre? Yes, I have, actually. Uh, it's been a while, but I have heard of them. He, he, well, well, we all we all like him, but he's really mental on them, but oh, it would have taken up the entire two-hour interview if I'd have sent you one of those. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> oh. so, that one out. Have you actually, uh, back in the when you first started, have you actually covered a lot of these songs, or is it just like, uh, well, have you actually, uh, is that the reason why you chose them as well, because you covered them, or uh, haven't you covered them? Wait, wait, yeah, we've covered 
No, no, sorry, I'm taking it. No, you, it's fine. You, you yeah, no, we cover loads of Nickelback songs, ah. and we're doing more, like, oh, so. Um, Beatles. In terms of Dream Theatre, uh, Gavin it's... and Ben have done, have covered Dream, and it went well, I think, so. Cool. So yeah, we, we co- me and Ben did a little cover of a, an entire Dream Theatre gig in December, which took us, like, all his lives to rehearse for. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, all the other bands that have sent you, we, we have covered them pretty at some much. Point. Yeah, or oh, we have plans to cover, because we like, we don't. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a pretty true reflection of what we like, it's a... Yeah, yeah. Actually, because uh, obviously, uh, obviously you've, uh, at one, po- one point, when you're gigging, you uh, she code and p- uh, play your own material as well. Uh, I know, uh, like you know, there's a lot of cover bands around, and um, do you, as a band, do you actually find it uh, well, not fine, but um, when you've played covers and then you started your own material, did actually playing covers help to write, or did it just influence you in the fact that you, you, you just like playing the songs and listening to them? Um, I think a bit of both, really. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, yeah. like, um, it's always, um, if two out of three of us like the song, then we'd usually cover it, yeah. unless anyone really hates it. And, but, I think some of the stuff, like riffy songs, yeah. then that probably influences. But what if we're covering something completely different, then it's probably just enjoyable to play, and it might not influence what we'd write. In terms of, well, in being a drummer, yeah, also bands inspires you to do beats like it, because yeah, like um, I love the Police, so. But obviously I don't go all crazy off beats in like rock songs and stuff, so. I'm just listening and uh, waiting for the breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get a word in. Uh, but what I'm going to do now, guys, because we've got two uh, tracks left from the influence tracks and what you gave us and what your tracks before you go into a little bit of performance for us in about 20 minutes. So, um, why did you pick the Foot Fighters and Breakout? Is there a like specific reason? I take you, you have covered this track of the past? We haven't covered this, it destroy me. <laughs> but I, I love the song, love the middle section where he goes mental. Cool. So it's, what, it's one of, I think it was the first Foo Fighters song I ever heard. Ah. Those old Kerrang CDs they used to do. Oh yeah, the Kerrang compilations. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Let's uh, have a listen to this and uh, let's, because uh, I know there's a few Foo Fighters fans, I think, and I know there's a few Nickelback fans around. I know Jason's a big fan. We hear about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I can so, you up to date about it, weren't you, on Facebook? Yeah, well, I had him. I, was, uh, I said, I, he said to me, are you going to record it? I said, no, I'm going to throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought, of course I'll bloody record it. It's not mad at you, silly bugger. <laughs> but, <laughs> he's, he's from Liverpool, isn't he? What do you <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's gonna, <laughs> There he's goes gonna that promotion. Yeah, no, he's not going to promote anymore. <laughs> Actually, guys, because um, I actually asked him about this, and uh, but uh, are you actually uh, planning to do, uh, to uh, perform at International Pop Overthrow this year? Have you actually been asked or not? Or no? <laughs> no, I just wondered because like because uh, I actually asked Jason about this because I thought you had last year, because um, obviously uh, uh, was it uh, obviously he promotes Clockwise and stuff, and they have been a couple of times. I just wondered if you had and. Uh, because actually pref- uh, the International Pop Overthrow is uh, in, L- in London this year. I just thought uh, it might be in thrown in the hat at some point. He pro- uh, I think he might be. He's, he's get his, I think we're doing a festival in Liverpool at some point. Oh, okay. it's, he's going to get us on, but I think we're going to have to turn it down a bit. So it's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> well, this uh, is... But he's, he's only been promoting us since October. Oh, okay. so it's only been... Well, four months. Oh, so. okay. Oh, that's, that makes more sense then. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that. Wow. Well, you never know. Now you mentioned happened. it. He's not getting out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. You have to. You have to put him up against the wall. Get us an IPO. <laughs> <laughs> and this is DJ Reuben on the Monday night, and uh, talking to Gavin and Tom. Tom's a drummer, and Gavin is a singer and guitarist. And if you yeah, want to have Tom's a, a snare him, player. Snare player, sorry, snare player. Oh, well, he is tonight anyway. Yeah. Uh, two, two sticks and a, and a snare, <laughs> and a partridge and a pear tree in the background. <laughs> so uh, this is. All right, all right. We, we've got. A... But yeah, uh, you've going through your albums. Uh, he was he got three out al- old albums. 
and uh, are they all got different drummers on? Because you said you've gone through a lot of them. Uh, are they all got different drummers on, or, or it's weird, really? Because no, they haven't. We we, we just uh, the drummer either kept leaving or we fired him, and then we I never had him in long enough before we met up again, <laughs> and then we finally finished and now so Tom's on the new recordings so there's only two drummers on all of us recordings but we've had four because <laughs> <laughs> so uh, apart from the fact that uh, you're re-recording a lot of things now and you said you've got new material um, is, there an, uh, is there any difference uh, with the writing you've done with music with the lyrics you have uh, obviously you know the lyrics come from somewhere either when you're gigging something comes up or do you, can you actually uh, do a lot of uh, do you actually do a lot of spur of the moment stuff for gigs or do you just uh, stick with the songs you play? No, we've we've started we've started. Horribly <laughs> changing we, we, the we, set. We, we whatever set list we write out. Yeah. The gig we just did last Saturday was the first time in about four or five years we stuck to a set list the entire gig yeah. through. <laughs> yes. We just change stuff in between depending on how it's going down. Yeah, so fairly me and, flexible. Me and ben, we we always mess around sometimes when um Gavin's to guitar like we stop sometimes just to make things interesting. Stop sometimes and it make me think, oh what well, I should have stopped. <laughs> or you just tell me after you go, I was too tired when you were doing that so uh, <laughs> and people start telling me off in the audience. No well, yeah. I didn't stretch that gig so that's why my arms <laughs> What's is uh, is uh, C B C Bradford Radio or something? No, B C B. Uh, is it BCB? Oh, I got that wrong way around when I was typing it. Yeah. Uh, but well, yeah, is, that, is that like Bradford FM or? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, it's BCB Radio Bradford. Ah. What was that? What was that? Uh, was that? Uh, well, that, I know this, this was last year. I gather. Uh, what was that to promote? Uh, was that to promote the video you were running at the time or? Uh, when was it? We, we did. We've done three sessions for them. Ah, okay. Uh, the first couple were very early on. In. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah, we didn't just not invite you, Tom. You just were in the band. <laughs> That's what you did, did we? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then we did one about. It was. It's probably two and a half years ago. The last time we did one, and we were promoting the EP we had out then. Very nice guy called Simon Ashbury. Because like, uh, you. did you do like a like half hour like session or something, or what? Uh, what did you? Because uh, I know you well. You must have uh, played. Well, did you play all the stuff at the time? Was it just the EP you played, or like the new, you know, new recordings? Uh, I think. We might have played some older stuff. It was a live session we did. Yeah. And prob- we've probably got some horrible recordings of it somewhere. <laughs> In fact, James, who's here, has just said he's got a cassette of it. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> cassette? Whoa, yeah. yeah. The old-fashioned iPod. Even the first one we did. That, I bet that's awful. I liked him. <laughs> sort of. But I, yeah. <clears throat> I'm just going to shut up. <laughs> you liked what, the early material? Yeah. It sounded good. I've met Thomas E.D. of all the early stuff and he's like forcing us to write new songs around the old riffs. Because like, uh, did you uh, all appear as a band on the radio? Was it like a big room you, re- you actually played live in or how'd, uh, how'd it go? It, it was a little like, uh, what was it? It, was like, it wasn't a massive live room. No. Nah. It's just a studio. I don't know I'm looking at it. It was just um, <laughs> it, just a studio and like I've we're going to do tonight. <laughs> well, what we're doing now, guys, is uh, play the last track that you gave us, and then we're going to get on to the live, uh, live uh, acoustic bit. Uh, this is uh, you, even though it's called Ballad. Uh, but some, I actually changed the name, but it's just the, the players mucking about. This is Aggravation and You on Music World Radio. <laughs> Thank you. 
Gavin, uh, the guitarist and singer, as you heard there on that song, damn good guitar work, and uh, the drummer um, Tom with his snare, back. <laughs> <laughs> we were like during that song, we were like naughty, like three naughty bloody schoolboys, like burping and <laughs> laughing over the top of it. Well, you birds. <laughs> actually, I heard nothing. I I actually, I heard nothing of that. Surprisingly. I opened. I tried sneakily opening a bottle of beer while while I were on, and I managed to get it off, and then I dropped it on the floor. Nearly dropped the bottle on the floor. I thought you thought you might have picked that up. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the most eventful thing of the night, and you didn't pick it up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Typical, you know. But um, actually, Gavin, I was going to ask uh, through that track. Was listening to it. Um, uh, did you actually overlay two guitars on that? Because it sounds like you're doing both. You know, it sounds like you're doing double guitar, or did you get somebody in to do it? Because uh, it, oh, just, it, it just sounds it, like you've overlaid it. Yeah, I have. Yeah, it's me. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's all me. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> I'm on. I did everything. No, I didn't. No, I thought that. I thought, hold on. Yeah. Either, either you hired a mate to do that, or he did it himself and overlaid it, which is pretty cool. No, yeah, the little uh, melody part on top of it in the verse. Ah. Is, is, 
Actually, right. guys, uh, when you actually record your music uh, through the computer, who's the actual artist for doing multitasking with the uh, tracks? Because I know that is not very easy, actually, because uh, only a few musicians I've interviewed over the past year or so have actually got the skills to actually overlay music, uh, overlay uh, instruments on the computer, because I know that it's not that easy doing it myself. But uh, do you find it particularly easy as... Uh, uh, as, a, as you know, putting it through computer and actually doing a line, uh, you know, get it in sync. Basically, do you find it easy? Yeah, actually, overlaying it, yeah, it's yeah. fine because like it's all click track. Um, so once we've we do a little bit of cheating sometimes. Yeah. Not with the actual we don't not play anything, mm. but if you've recorded a perfect drum track to a click track, um, then if it it one we record yeah. over, and then you can. Get some continuity with vocals if you yeah. do one good chorus take, and you can keep that for all of them. Cool. Yeah, because I was wondering that because, like, I, and I said, not uh, I was it Gavin Kaufman who actually uh, uh, Jason promotes as well. He's in Liverpool, and he, he I was actually stunned what he can record. You know, he actually overlays everything, and you can't tell. It sounds like there's a band behind him. Is actually like he's got about six tracks he overlays for. God, you know, some people have a bit of a, a skiller when it comes to it, they just can completely clean it, and I thought, bloody hell, it's like, yeah. you know, but that sounds really good if you can, like, actually have the skill to do it yourself, you know, a lot of people don't, I've heard things like, they've overlaid it, but it's slightly out of the beat, just a tad, you can tell when you listen to it, but yeah. with that stuff, it's really good, so, uh, a nice one for putting the guitars over. Cheers.